Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I have decided to come back uh, this morning, Monday, uh, Monday the 8th of April of this year, 2024. Yesterday evening, I entertained you a little bit about the celebration of the 30th anniversary of genocide in Rwanda, to which many uh, guests participated, as they have been invited uh, by the terrorist and dictatorial regime of Kagame in Kigali, the capital city of Rwanda. What is genocide? Genocide originates from Latin language. It is a Latin word. Uh, its etymology is in two parts or two pieces, genos and kidere. Put in your mind that C, the C there in Latin, it is read ki or K. So, Genocide is genos kidere. It means, genos means human beings, and kidere is the verb which means killing or cutting or exterminating. So, genocide or genocide is the extermination, deliberate and planned extermination of a certain ethnic group or people, regardless of where they are, but it is a planned and deliberate massacre of a group of people. It is what uh, we mean by genocide. Historically speaking, this term was used for the first time in 1944 uh, by a Polish Jewish lawyer called um, Raphael uh, Lamkin who was who was heading the team of lawyers uh, during the Nuremberg a trial of the Nazi who killed uh, Jews uh, during the Second World War in Germany. So it is Raphael. We use it for the, the first time there. And then later on, it was adopted by the United Nations around 1948. And then it became popular. But in the world, there have been a lot of genocide here and there. has been genocide in Myanmar, in China, in Syria, in Yugoslavia, in Srebrenica, I think, when they eliminated uh, the Muslim, there has been genocide in uh, in Armenia, though that one was recognized almost a century later after it has been uh, committed by the Ottoman Empire. There has been genocide in Namibia by the German colonizer who eliminated the Herero, the Nanas, etc. All that is recognized as genocide. It now depends on how people publicize the genocide or how they sell it. Excuse me the term uh, selling because other people take genocide as a trade fund from which they generate income. It is the current situation 
in Rwanda. Rwanda under the regime of the dictator Paul Kagame has been selling uh, the genocide in their country. Well, we, we don't deny that people were not massacred or, did, or people didn't die in Rwanda. We don't deny that. Truly, people died a lot but not to the tune that they are estimating, saying one million, etc., etc., uh, in Rwanda. Because the bones which are laying in that memorial do not reflect the truth about the death of the people. How do you identify whether the bones belong to the Tutsi, the Hutu, the Pygmies, the Congolese, and other people at the time who were living in Rwanda when the war broke out? How do you recognize it? Even though you go through DNA, there is no specific uh, genetic feature that differentiate them, given the fact that Tutsi are taller than Hutu, but still we find some Tutsi who are short. How do you differentiate that those bones sometimes belong to the monkeys? I am not mocking on this, but just to say that to some extent, people should be sincere. We know uh, pretty well that the world has been characterized by the falsification of history. Much of what we learn and teach children at school is the version of the winners, starting from World War One and Two, the reasons that we learn and what we teach children, apparently, is the version of the winners of the war, and who wanted to impose their version to the world and to the forthcoming generation. But there are many hidden reasons why the war started, First and Second War, which the winners do not want to reveal. But as time goes on, there has been people that they call negationists or revisionists, who today have started defending Hitler that to some extent he was right. I'm not supporting him that he was right in killing people, but there are reasons which led to the war and not exclusively what the winners, you know, have put in textbooks that people are reading, learning, and teaching children. It is the version of the winners because they know that that people can't defend themselves. It is the same thing with Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, you should stop being emotional and too much passionate by the narrative uh, which is being narrated by Paul Kagame and his, his backers, those who are backing him. When you listen and you watch main reporters from Rwanda, the way they talk, one wonders, what is special in Rwanda? 
which makes that these people talk so passionately like this and do not want to dig deeply and find out what actually occurred during that tragic period. Well, for your information, there has been three, if not four, genocides during that period from Rwanda to Congo. And in a nutshell, let me put it in this way. The first genocide, yes, was a triggered by the Rwandan Patriotic Front, the army that Kagame led from Uganda where he's been living in exile to come back to his country, to Rwanda. When the Rwandan Patriotic Front attacked Rwanda, truly in a war, there are casualties. Many people died without knowing whether it was Tutsi or Hutu, but both tribes killed one another. When Kagame's troop brought down the presidential jet in which two presidents were traveling, Rwandan president, the late juvenile Abiyarimana, and the Burundian president, Melchior Ndadaye, who were returning from Tanzania, uh, I think Tanzania or from Arusha, after the conference, after the president of Rwanda has conceded at least 50-50 or 60% of power to the rebel, after signing, still, the Tutsi had to kill him. After bringing down the presidential jet of the leader of the country's majority, What happened, happened. The majority had to retaliate. And that's what you call the first genocide. Who triggered the genocide? Because it is easy to say somebody brought the gun and ammunition, but that one didn't shoot. The one who shot is the one who pulled the trigger. Therefore, the mastermind, the provocateur of genocide is Paul Kagame and his patriotic front. They knew by killing the leader of the majority, there would be reprisal, there would be retaliation from the majority. And it is what happened. So the Hutu, who are the majority, retaliated. And during this period, after Kagame has occupied Kigali, he organized the mass killing of both Hutu and Tutsi. So, those who were killed by the Hutu, according to our findings and what we know, are minimal compared to the number of both Hutu and Tutsi who were massacred, execution style by the Rwandan Patriotic Front. Because when Kagame came, many Tutsi were reluctant to welcome him. And those ones had to be killed even though they were Tutsi. And Kagame did this to grab the power. So, the Hutu killed the Tutsi, but in the retaliation, Kagame came because he wanted the power. He killed both Tutsi and the Hutu at a higher number than what the Hutu who had Bashet did. That is the first twofold genocide. Mark my words. Second genocide. When the Hutu crossed the border to come to DRC, who followed them? 
they were tracked, they were pursued by Kagame and his Ronan Patriotic Front. He came with his troop to massacre all the Tutsi who fled. I mean, who fled to Congo and who were in refugee camps. And one thing that I should tell you is that there were war planes which were bombarding refugee camps. Yet we know that during the rule of President Juvenal Abiyarimana, the Rwandan government of the time had no air navy. They had no war planes. If there was a plane in Rwanda at the time, it was only the presidential aircraft, probably, with tourists who sometime were coming to land in Kigali, in Rwanda. Rwanda is a poor country. It can't afford buying an aircraft. And I'm not mocking with them. It is the reality. So where did the airplanes which came to bombard the refugee camp come from? Find out who helped the Rwandan Patriotic Front to massacre the refugees who crossed the border. And during that time, the one who was commanding the troop was not only James Kabarebe, but it was combined with Joseph Kabila, who became president in Congo for 18 years. They used to call him Commander Hippo. Hippo is an abbreviation for Hippolyte, which is his real name, and not Joseph Kabila. His real name is Hippolyte Kajambere Kanambe. That is his real name. Reaching Congo, after the killing of Laurent Kabila, he changed. He practiced a surgical operation on his name to become Joseph Kabila. They killed their own compatriot in the refugee camp, camps in Congo. And when they killed the refugee camps, the refugees didn't find an empty land, an empty space. Those spaces were as well occupied by the Congolese, who were the owner of the land. So both the Rwandans and the indigenous Congolese were massacred by the Rwandan forces which invaded Congo. With the permission of the so-called international community, which was supposed to protect the refugees as well as the Congolese who were hospitable to them. That is the second, if not the third, genocide. I repeat, first genocide, Hutu attack Tutsi after the killing of their leaders. Second genocide, Kagame, having occupied Kigali, Rwanda, massacred both Hutu and Tutsi. You can add to that, he massacred as well the Toa. The Toa are the pygmies, the short people, because in Rwanda, there are three ethnic groups. The indigenous people of the land, the Toa, the Hutu, who are the Bantu, and then the immigrant from the Nile, from Ethiopia, the Tutsi, the invaders. So that makes three genocides. The awful and greatest and so far ignored genocide is what has been happening in Congo for the past 26, 28 years since Rwanda and Uganda invaded Congo, killing Congolese people. The death toll is estimated to almost 20 million Congolese people who have been killed and are being killed by the Rwandan troops and Ugandan combined. Nobody talks about this because the corrupt 
immoral international community and the multinationals want resources from Congo. They don't talk about this. There is a report drafted by an international team of investigators sent by United Nations is called the mapping report. It is more than 600 pages which can be found on the net. It is published whereby the names of the genocide perpetrators in Congo as well as in Rwanda are listed and Mr. Kagame Kagame's name is topping the list together with so-called Joseph Kabila and all the Rwandan terrorists like Nkunda Batware etc that the international community backed and calling them the Congolese citizens. If they are Congolese citizens, why do they live in Rwanda and they are not living in Congo? So the international community is immoral, it's lying, and it's supporting thuggery from Kagame because Kagame is a thug. He's a bandit, he's a criminal who has been backed by Bill Clinton because the tragedy of Congo as I started with Bill Clinton's backing off the Ronald Patriotic Front. It is known, it is not me, Kilele, who is saying it. It is well written, well documented. But the international, so-called international community has kept mum. It doesn't say anything about the tragedy of Congo. For them, Congolese are not human beings. Congolese are minerals. When they see a Congolese, it is a mineral. It is a piece of gold and diamond. And today, what has been publicized, publicized is the Rwandan genocide. The Rwandan genocide is a lie to some extent. It is a trade fund. Because... Where have you seen the criminals accusing the victims? Tutsi and Hutu who have been killed together with Congolese are the victims. They are the ones who are being accused. And the killers, the murderers, are the ones who are glorified today. This is ironical and difficult to understand. All this only because of money, because of wealth. You know, it is our late Prime Minister, Petrus Emery Lumumba, who once said, the history of Congo will not be written in Washington, in New York, in Paris, nor in Brussels. But it will be written by the Congolese themselves. And we are writing that history. You go to flatter Kagame. What does Kagame has? What does he have in Kagame? What does he have? If you want to make business with Congo, why don't you directly deal with Congolese government or Congolese people? But you prefer backbiting us by entering through Rwanda who are thieves. You, you would have benefited legally more by dealing directly with Congo and Congolese than taking a thug who has nothing. What is in Rwanda? We're talking about a country with beautiful climate, uh, with its hills. What is it? What does Rwanda has? 
Tutsi are jealous people. They are envious people. And as I put it yesterday, Africans and the world at large, you must pay attention with the Tutsi. When the Tutsi come to you, they have got strategies, the following strategies. Lie. Poison. Blackmail. And prostituting their daughters all over. You add to that, when I talk about blackmail, it's what we call calumny. It is wrong accusation. They would accuse you. They would blackmail you. That is the strategy they utilize once they enter your country. You must pay attention. With these people. They can be in your country. You think you're dealing with honest people. But you're really dealing with the snake as it is described in the Bible. Don't be happy to deal with them. Because they won't love or like you. What they want is your resources. And the Western world, the Western years, have found that these people are the best allies they can utilize to destabilize everywhere in Africa and in the world. Kagame sent troops in Mozambique, sent troops in southern Sudan, sent troops in, cent uh, in Central Republic, sent troops wanted sent troops in, in Benin and you see them almost infiltrating all over the world through sweet words you must pay attention you African government whatever you are don't be naive to fall victim to this narrative of genocide I repeat, we don't deny that there hasn't been mass killing in Rwanda, but it is a lie that those who triggered, who caused genocide, are Kagame and his troop. Once more, I recommend everyone to buy this book in praise of blood. Kagame has never deny all the truth which is narrated here he has never denied the details which are in the UN mapping report which was published as I said to repeat myself more than of more than 600 something pages so you find there are spies and lies everywhere like Azaria Surbero Moise Nyarugabo, etc., etc. Ipolit Kajambere Kanambe, Joseph Fabila, touring all the world and talking lies. You feel pity, pity, pity to them. They, they've been genocide, they've been massacred. So, are they the only human beings? What about what is happening in Congo? What they are doing in Congo? How close are we responsible for the genocide in Congo? Why are we attacked? Why have we been invaded? Yet we are not part of the conflict which occurred in Rwanda. It is two people who fight. Us being hospitable, we opened up our doors to welcome them today we are victims of our hospitality and the whole world keep quiet kagame is saying yesterday the world has abandoned them how did how has the world abandoned them them who have been generating fund for lies of the crime that they have committed in rwanda Rwanda is not only surrounded by Congo. 
You find Kenya that side, Uganda upward, Tanzania down, and Burundi. Why didn't the international community ask other countries to open up their borders and send them there? Rather, they decided to send them to Congo. Just to tell you, in terms of what I'm saying, that the plan was not necessarily to kick Abiyarimana out of his position as a president, but to loot Congo via the backing of the international community with all the international multinationals, I mean to repeat myself, whose names are mentioned in the mapping report. So do not come with falsification of saying, no, the problem in Congo, it is Mobutu. You know, the time uh, the Rwandans, uh, the Tutsi were in Congo, uh, and that is, can you relate the genocide in Rwanda with the current situation in Congo? There is no link. All in all, it is a lie. Now you find analysts, analysts coming with analysis, false analysis because they need money. No Mobutu at that time uh, denied them, yet they are citizens, historically speaking. And I stress this. I stress it here that we are 450 tribes in Congo. From time immemorial, there hasn't been any tribe called Tutsi in Congo, nor Hutu in Congo. It's just not there. During the 1885 Berlin Conference, which saw Africa being chopped into pieces, given though some borders were drafted illegally, in Congo, we recognize some tribes in Congo and outside Congo's borders. But we don't have the Tutsi and the Hutu in Congo. Southern part of Congo, we have got tribes living in Zambia related to tribes living in Congo. We have got tribes living in Angola, in Congo, Brazzaville, in Gabon, living in Congo. Same tribe, as you know at the time. The Congo kingdom stretched too far. The whole Angola was Congo. Congo, Brazzaville was Congo. Part of southern Gabon was Congo. Angola, Congo, Brazzaville, Congo, Kinshasa, we speak the same languages. Kikongo and Lingala. But Kikongo and Lingala were not spoken in Rwanda, nor in Burundi, nor in Uganda. Ethnologists, anthropologists, led studies and books are there. And when you go to the Belgium Museum, you will find what I am talking about. So the rest of narrative is lie, is flattery, is thieving, is criminality, and it must stop. Kagame is a liar, Tutsi are liars, and the backers as well are all liars. And this is for Congo of Petrus Lumumba, of Pierre Mulele, of Joseph Kasavubu, of Kim Pavita, of Simon Kingambo, Kimbangu, of all Congolese who died and those who were fighting so that the Congolese nation could survive. Société, société, belle, boyo, calinzate, tout comme on a parfois.
na ba foyen nene mongo papa na mama ya lo gesate e ko malobi mo na bimi fase a kimi ndaku mo na komi na balabala mo na bonla na wenze pon ni ya lo gesate na ba foyen oboni le lo mindele ba sangana ki ba sali ero mo mo komi makasi pon na dialog dialog de sali dola le lo de sala makasi dialog de sali le lo livre sterling de sala makasi Il y a un moment où dialogue est nécessaire, la vie n'a pas Dans tout ça, le dialogue est inutile. Tcha tcha tcha, Congo dialogue, Congo dialogue, Congo dialogue. Tout ça, bon, il y a une solution, Congo dialogue, c'est utile.